All right, Ali Snow in the building. What's going on, little lady? Just sitting around. All right, all right, all right. So thank you for coming on to the show. I really do appreciate it. Uh, why don't you do me a favor? Introduce yourself. Let everybody know uh, where you're from, uh, how you got into trucking, and all that good stuff. Let's see. I'm from Salisbury, North Carolina, which is um, everybody knows where I'm at because there's a Wolves and a Pilot here. <laughs> okay. That's how you know where I'm from. Um, I'm a fourth generation trucker who got told to never do it mm -hmm. and uh, ended up being just hard headed and wanted to do it anyway. Uh, Mom's drove for 15 years now. She pulled doubles for FedEx for the longest time. Mm -hmm. um, I think I've been driving. I got my, I started school January of 2020. I got my driver's license March the 10th. I graduated the 5th. Um, okay, so you, the original. So you started, so, so you started back, you started back last year. When during COVID the, hit. During the pandemic. Yeah, when COVID hit. Okay, exactly. was that. And then, was At that, that point, the original plan was to go with FedEx, but COVID hit and nobody wanted to train. So that was the biggest issue I found. As soon as I got my driver's license, they had shut everything down and I was kind of stuck. Um, I ended up picking, I'm from North Carolina, so May trucking out of Oregon. I had never even heard of them. You don't see them trucks on this side of the map. They say it's a 48 state company. It's damn sure not. It's down the West Coast. Mm -hmm. They'll be over here, but they're not really over here. I ended up going with them and then staying out like five and six weeks at a time, which just, I'm 33 and I got two girls. They're how, now 12 and 13. How, how long, how long was it, uh, after you got your license that, uh, that the scene of COVID started affecting you from, you know, getting into trucking? See now as I, as I was in school, right as I got out of school, they had shut everything down. Mm -hmm. Um, I was actually working for Food Line Warehouse out of North Car uh, out of Salisbury. There's a warehouse. It's a grocery warehouse. Mm -hmm. um, I worked there, so I know what it was from the inside of the warehouse. Like everybody was catching it, they would, but we didn't shut down. I get, you know, we're the ones supplying all the toilet paper. Mm -hmm. um, but they would have drivers in the dock for hours. It was utterly ridiculous. Then coming from trucking, it was like trying to find somebody to train me and then get out here on the road. It was utterly ridiculous. You, you could find nobody and then you're stuck at home and all, and then it was as a mother, it's like at that time, it's one of those things. So do I actually leave my kids or do I stay here? Or is this something that I need to really be worried about? And do I need to just keep what job I have? Or do I need to go ahead and go out here? And I didn't just spend all this money for nothing trying to get those CDs. Okay, so, so um, doing so so during the COVID, so during the COVID, you said no, you said nobody, not even Prime, not even Swift, no, see, nobody. I didn't want to go with those big companies. I knew from the beginning because Mom's always told me not to work for a big company and work for a smaller company, and then I knew I needed experience, and that's where it came from. Mm -hmm. um, May was, and then I don't believe in a hair follicle. Some people, and it's not even necessarily that I do anything because all I do is drink, but like, I feel like that's just too much information. And then Swift, don't nobody want to pull a Swift trailer just because of the stigma against it, I guess. Mm -hmm. And I didn't, I'm already a female truck driver, so I'm going to get picked at and looked at anyway, so I didn't want to add to it. So it was like, let me find a company who isn't known to have a bunch of dumbass drivers not knowing that I literally just went to a West Coast company that was known for having a bunch of dumbass drivers. So <laughs> May, May was just as bad. I just didn't know May it was just bad because it was from over yonder and not from over here, where there's a Snyder Terminal in Charlotte. Yeah. I, it's over there off of States, was, I was, think it's off of Statesville, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, Statesville Road in Charlotte. My thing was, was the only thing that May offered me that these other companies couldn't was that I knew what I was going to make every day. Because as a truck driver, what nobody seems to talk about when you're going to get your CDLs is the fact that you don't know, because it all becomes a stamina type of thing, if you can actually run that 14-hour clock out. Some people can't drive five, six, seven hours a day. They're tired and it's done. But traffic, whatever it may be, they just, it's too much. So I didn't know, and that was one thing I took into account at first, if I was going to be able to get in this truck and bust that clock out, mm -hmm. I wanted to make sure my paycheck was going to be something 
steady, though. I knew what I was going to make. We've got kids to take care of and bills to pay. We can't be having a $300 paycheck. That's not going to get me nowhere. So it was a guaranteed daily rate pay. And if my clock ran out, even on my 34, I still got paid for that. Even okay, if the so, truck didn't move. But so, so they brought you in as a salary driver instead of a, instead of a CPM. It, basically. But What's, they wanted you to stay out forever. That was their plan. Oh, okay. Yeah, because that, that eleven hour that that eleven hour clock is theirs. <laughs> anything that you do on exactly. your it anything, don't what anything it was. that you do on your ten hour clock is is yours. They they don't care if you know whatever you do on your ten, but when you on that eleven, they inspect you to drive the entire entire eleven out. So they do and, and then they were um they're a reefer company, which means you sit in the dock all day. And then it was also um, somebody that ran out with, which means you got to throw chains. So it's just, it was a, I spent six months there. I give them six months. And then I left and I actually went to a friend of mine who was an owner off out of Charlotte. He had started, uh, well, he had three trucks at the time. Within six months, we went from having three trucks to 13 trucks. And it was only because I came in, we were uh, running Amazon and off of a wild board. And uh, just trying to fill in, trying to get Amazon. Um, once we got Amazon to where we could run out of Charlotte, North Carolina, and the truck was getting paid about eighteen to two thousand dollars every two days. That's a two day block. So mm -hmm. it, I, the truck was making around seven a week, and my drivers are getting percentage. the The issue with him was is he could get me equipment, he couldn't get me brand new equipment, and the equipment we did have it tend to always have an issue with it. So that was where the, that I ended up leaving that company because the equipment just, it wasn't that the pay scale was good or that the home time was bad. None of that was actually an issue. It was, I'm in a 2012 truck and, and this you, you know, that's, that seems, that, that, that seems, you know, that, that seems like, like the trope from everybody that comes from, that, that comes from being with an owner operator. It's like, it's like the money's good. The, the, the owner operator give you your home time, but it's just that the equipment is bad. The equipment is crap. It's like, and I, I guess for an owner operator, especially a small owner operator that's starting out, you know, he, you know, he's looking at it from an economy. I mean, as, as an economy wide, because he don't want to just go out and then boom, right off the rip buy a brand new spanking sunshiny truck. And he could say he could save more money and, and and make more money by bringing in, you know, maybe a 2012, 2013. But of course, you know, well, the as crazy the driver, thing was is, these older trucks aren't actually bad trucks. It's just that they tend to have stupid shit that goes wrong with them that people don't pay no attention or push it off till later, and then it ends up being a bigger problem. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, half the time, if it would just be fixed when it was noticed, it would be fine. But um, we had a, he had a tendency to, the, we had a Volvo, it kept having little issues, and then we had to replace the motor in it. Um, and, and his thing was, was he would also buy trucks um, from these little small dealers. Now, I don't think going to a dealer is necessarily a bad thing, I guess, however you can do it. But you have to somehow know like me, like there's a company, um, it's called Select Trucks. They got one in like Atlanta, Georgia. There's one actually in Charlotte, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. I have a friend of mine. He's bought two trucks from this dealer. Um, he's going, um, it's actually his brother. Uh, he's going on, uh, I think it was like seven months. He's bought two old Walmart trucks. Walmart takes care of their fleet. It's all about knowing where your truck comes from. Um, Walmart takes care of their fleet. They've done nothing but put brakes and have the oil changed on these trucks. They've needed nothing. The trucks weren't expensive, and he is building a company off of this where somebody like my old boss would go out here and buy something out of somebody's backyard and try to doctor it up because it was cheap and then didn't fix what needed to be fixed but expect the driver to continue to run it. It, you, it becomes you, about money and you, not about comfort. Exactly. You know, uh, you know they say uh, buying a truck from a fleet is a hell of a lot better than buying a truck from anywhere else other than a uh other than a dealership because the fleets like prime 
uh, you know, Walmart and and other fleets like that, they take care of their trucks because of, you know, because of the because of the PM, you know, they keep up with regular PMs on it. Exactly. And these, these small people, they try to stretch the dollar. So that's where when you're looking at what company you're going to go to, especially with it is smaller people, how small are they? And, and is it small enough that if your truck was to break down, you're going to be okay? Like, my, we're small enough to where we're, like, around 10 trucks, and they're buying me trucks as fast as they can. Like, my truck. I pick my truck out. Mm-hmm. A 2017 KW T680. Uh, little single bump. It's got 616,000 miles on it now. When I got it, it had under 600,000 miles on it. We bought it from the KW dealership in Raleigh, North Carolina. Pay 55, right at 55 for it. Um, they were willing to fix the issues. Now, when we were looking at buying a truck, I had also picked out a Peterbilt that I had liked. They were wanting seventy some thousand dollars for it, but I only had 400000 which meant I still had some of the extended warranty, or some of the warranty. And it would be very easy to get an extended warranty. But it sounds like uh, the, hold on for a second, Allie. It, it sounds like you're breaking up a little bit. Do you have a? Are you talking to me through your Bluetooth, or do you are you talking to me through the phone? Through the phone. Oh, uh, I, I, I literally live in the country, so but uh, I am sitting still, so I'm not moving. Uh, okay. I don't know what it could mean. <laughs> okay. Okay. Go ahead. Continue. But it it becomes an issue of if you do buy them from these dealerships. If they don't fix the issues that are wrong before you already get the truck, then you're just buying a money pit anyway. Right. That's the good thing about a dealership. Most of the time, you can bargain with them enough to fix the issues before you buy it. You right. buy it off of somebody, you don't have the chance to be able to do that with these people. I think that that's where buying them from a dealership tends to be better, but it all depends on your pocket. It really does. Okay. A lot of this stuff is, is look. And people don't get that it's look All right. buying a truck. All right. So the company that you that you, that you're driving for, uh, what's what's the name of the what's the name of the company that you're driving for, and where are they located at? Um, Lake Forest, North Carolina. It's Simba Trucking, just like the what? Lion King. Literally, every time I hear it, that's what I think of. Wait, is so is what now? Simba, Tim- like off the oh, line. Simba. 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 Yeah. Okay, Simba, Simba. Trucking out out of North yeah, that's Carolina. How you have to say it too. Simba, yeah, out of Wake Forest. Say um, how, say how it sounds. Simba. Simba. <laughs> okay, okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. So this, uh, yeah. so this, uh, a small company. Uh, is this a, is. a small company out of uh, North Carolina? How long you been driving? How long you been driving with them? Um, I have been with them for about four months now. Okay. Um, it the um the guy that actually owns the company is a pastor he is as sweet as he can be he um he has his own church um his son was actually a friend of mine for years even before i got my videos and when i eventually went to my last company and was having the issues i did he was like come over here and do for me what you're doing for them and everything will be okay so it it's it's a very family oriented company that's the thing i love about this like you, the kids, anything's going wrong, they definitely listen, and it's not necessarily all about dollars, which is the good thing about a small company because you're not just a number to these people. How was but, how how was how was it doing? Like when how how did you come to find out about them, and and what was the uh, what was the process like for your orientation coming in there? Um, well, since I pretty much knew everybody, um. They they take us down there, um, just like with the drivers that I hired now. Um, we take you down there. You get to meet everybody, everybody that you're going to deal with. Um, if you want to book your own loads, I'll set it up on your phone where you can have the same access that I do. Uh, if not, then it's kind of one of those things to where we're going to get your information. Where you're going to sign everything. We're going to get your bank account information. You're going to get to meet everybody. We're going to go out to eat. We're going to make everybody make sure you're fed. And get your truck, and then you go out. That's exactly how it was the, my first day. My thing was was I was getting to pick out a truck. So when I first started, I ended up going and, 
and, and helping shop more than anything, I guess. Um, okay. This is what we have access to. But uh, I guess as a country driver, just kind of come in and get what we have. Now, you. Um, not, usually, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, we usually run KW, and I don't even like Kenworth. I uh, like Freightliner. All right. So you say you're not you're not a fan of uh, hair follicles. So the the pre employment drug testing with this company is urine. Uh, yes, it is very much urine. And then and my thing is is this, I just feel like it's entirely too much information. And then I guess it comes from me meeting people out here and hearing people's story. There, it's been entirely too many times that I have heard somebody, you know, bored as we're both driving down the road, cry their heart out to me how trucking was their savior. And that's how it was for me, but for a whole different reason. Trucking wasn't my savior because I was on drugs. It was other reasons. But some people literally the road and coming out here and being in a truck is what gets them away from the bull crap at home so that they have the ability to be healthy mentally. But the road also provides its own bullshit. So it's one thing or another. But they, they get to get clean. I have like three of my friends who before they were truckers, but they just didn't do no good. And and this has saved them. So I believe that a hair follicle is is too much information. Okay. You don't need to know what I was doing six months to a year ago. If I'm clean now and I have the ability to drive this. But then I, that can go down a hairy road, especially from a management point of view, because you don't know when people are going to relapse. Right, but it 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 you you can't hold somebody's past against them, I guess, for the rest of their life. So it, it can have hairy sides to both of them. Okay. So it just you just have, I guess pay attention to people. Me, I tend to talk to everybody. I'm I'm friends with everybody. If you're bored, call me. We're both driving down the road. So, All right. So what? So as far as the as far as the company itself. Uh, being that it's a small company, uh, and it's like family owned, do they do they have uh, do they have like driver like driver camp? What what all what all in there all in the trucks? What's all the amenities inside of the trucks? Oh, we got everything in here. I'll get you to bring it some clothes and some food. We're gonna have a refrigerator, a microwave, and we're gonna put a gift. So uh, with the dash cam on it, so that way you we make sure at least you're covered. Okay, so is the comp not, is that a comp is that a company dash camera like a like a Garmin or is that a drive camera like like the that's light? That's one of the ones that you get. It's 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 a it's a pile of love because I don't I don't feel like it's one of those things I need to be able to pin into your truck and listen to what you have going on. That's not nothing I necessarily agree with either. So. If, if you have a camera, it's more for driver safety. So if somebody does do something stupid, the camera called it, I don't need to watch what you're doing. But you have the ability to save it and send it to me. And if anything does happen, we have the ability to go back and look at it. And you also have GPS built in. So it's just all one thing. It's not nothing extra on your dash. And it, it's more for your safety than ours because... I mean, we, we require at least one year's experience for our insurance, which it, it, I feel like one year you should know by one year what you're doing. So you've been through a winter, you've been through summer, like you, you, you're not perfect, but you, you've got a good handle on things. Okay. So by, by then, that is just a, a, a save our butt type thing just to make sure it's not required. You really want to not have it up there. It's not a big deal, but it's just a saver thing in the end. Okay. So what about, uh, so Woody, so since you only been there for like four months, uh, so far I'm, I'm, I'm guessing the, the best part is the fact that you was able to pick out your own truck. Uh, you're now able to help the company uh, bring on, uh, new drivers and stuff like that. Do you see yourself retiring from this company? Oh, very much so. They they definitely make sure it everything is taken care of. Um, brand new truck with brand new tires. I came off of eighty four in Oregon and blew a tire on the side of the road. Um, it was it's no issue getting anything fixed. 
the money is always on time. Um, and then it's a small company, so they know me. So it, it becomes a, do I want to give up certain things for other things? I get to kind of do what I want to, uh, just as much as any other driver does. Well, I don't get to do what I want to because of my job title. I, at first, we tell you what, like, this truck needs to make at least this amount of money a week. Mm -hmm. And then after that, if you want to go home and sit, that's fine. But... Like, as long as around it, we're good. And and it's not always like that. Some weeks are messed up. But every driver gets that. If you don't want to go to a certain area, that's the thing that I feel like people in any sort of power pay no attention to. There is drivers for every situation. And people like to do certain things. And, and everybody likes to do different stuff. I love the mountains, specifically. Love mountains. I refuse to drive mountains in the snow. Now, the guy that I work for, his son, which is, he drives also, um, he refuses to drive the mountains. He makes sure he books all of his loads off of 85 or 95. He doesn't do mountains. If you just stick into a driver's strong spot, then you don't necessarily stress the driver out, and then you're still making money. If I'm you not, tell me where you want to go. If I'm not mistaken, you mentioned something about uh, something about the drivers are able to uh, book their own load. So th is there is there a dispatcher that they that they can talk to, or do they just you know dispatch? I mean, they can dispatch and book all of their loads if they want to. Oh, there's definitely a dispatcher to talk to, mm -hmm. but if you want, my thing it, it's all about like what you're comfortable with. Some people want none of that responsibility, but we also pay off of percentage. So if you want, you want it with a driver, most of the issue is they feel like they could have made more or somehow you fucked up. So as a dispatcher, so if I give all of that to you and you have a bad week, you have a bad week because you had a bad week because you booked everything. Right. And you can't blame it on me. So that's always my thing. It, it's, are just giving you what you want. You want to have the ability to do it, that, so it can't be blamed on me. When everybody, I'm going to have a bad week too. The company is specifically for that truck if you do, but like it, it's all about. I guess at this point, giving you as much of the pie that you want to as you want to. And so if you want this much of the pie, take it. If you don't want to book your own load, that's fine. I'll do it for you, okay. or somebody will. Do it for you. So how? So how difficult it is for you know for new jacks to find this company? How how difficult it is to get uh, to drive for this company if there's any difficulty? It, there's a, a, a Google us. Mm -hmm. There's a link you can put an application in. Half time you just talk to me, and I will make sure everything goes where it needs to go. Okay, that's what's um, up. Our thing is is getting trucks as fast as we need trucks. Everybody is getting in the trucking industry. Like, it has really boomed over the last couple of years, way more than I feel like it has over over a, a very long period of time. Um, and it, everybody's cutting short on freight. Um, you've got a lot of people coming in who just take it for bottom dollar. So it, it, it becomes a hassle when it becomes bigger and more than one truck. But as long as we're just not taking cheap freight, are you like, are are you guys uh, are you guys W two or ten ninety nine? We are ten ninety nine right now. We're, okay, so we are going to hopefully soon have the option for W two. So being but that you, so being that you guys is ten ninety nine, you're. You, the, but we do offer insurance. Okay. We have insurance. We what, have all that good stuff. What kind of insurance that he offers? Um, medical, dental, um, all that good stuff. Uh. At ten ninety nine. At ten ninety nine. See, we're in the process of going to W two. Okay. So okay. Right. Right now, it is ten ninety nine. But we got all these extra things until we have the ability to get it moved over. But um, and everything like it should be. Okay. But, yeah. So, what advice? What advice would you give a new Jack uh, that might be interested in, in in the company you drive for, Simba? Um, the company. The company itself is a great company. I feel like the thing with new drivers is that nobody tends to tell people 
about multiple ways to get their CDL. Um, a year's experience has come in multiple different ways. But actually getting your CDL, it, it, people, okay, so I have been seeing a lot of videos posted on TikTok lately about people trying to explain to other people how to get your CDL. And I have seen multiple ones telling them to go do company paid training. Now, do I not company paid training? Not at all. If that is your last resort, that is your last resort, take it. It's going to be better for you in the end. But it should always be the last resort, and people are relying on this as a first chance. We actually have a government grant through a federal government grant. It's called the Workers Initiative Opportunities Act. For the unemployment office, you'll fill out some paperwork, and... They will pay for your schooling. They will pay for your permit. They will pay for your licensing. They will pay for whatever drug test you need. They will pay for it all. If you are unable to get that, I feel like after that, you need to go toward community colleges, which is where I went to school. They tend to offer you programs nowadays where you're going to come out with no restrictions and have the ability to get whatever endorsement you do want on your license and it's a longer program which means you're not coming out here of only three weeks supposedly of school and you probably wasn't in that truck for five hours really so because you sat in the classroom for a week and then you everybody else had to drive too so you you say you have three weeks of school just in the truck for five hours where at a where i went to school it was nine weeks we had a week of classroom the other time was spent either backing up a drive and or doing pre trip and learning that. Okay. It, and then if that's not have the ability, then I feel like you need to figure out how can you finance. How can we go to like um, Truckers of America and places like this and finance it? Because companies will pay it back, and then it gives you the ability to leave if that company doesn't treat you right, and then it. That can't happen. Then we go to company paid financing. Okay. So, like, that's a big issue. There's a lot of people that doesn't take a, a hold of that grant. And then there's always scholarships. I went to school on a scholarship. I didn't even use the grant. I just know it's there, and it can very much be used. And people don't seem to take advantage of it. So, what's the uh, so what's the percentage? Uh, what's what's the percentage that uh, that the company offer? Five. Hold on, I didn't hear you. What'd you say? Twenty five percent. What uh they they offer you twenty five percent? I mean they offer the drivers twenty five percent of the load? Yeah, drivers get twenty five percent of the load. Okay, 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 okay. Uh is there anything is there any other pay that they get other than the twenty five percent? Um, there is bonuses. Um if the truck has met its minimum amount which is $5,000 a week, which isn't nothing. Um, $5,000 a week, as long as you've met that every quarter, which is every three months, you get a $1,000 bonus. Um, and then there is a sign-on bonus. We do a $2,225 sign-on bonus. The day you get keys, you get $250. I know you're not going hungry until you get paid. I don't have to worry about it. What's um, the... Um what what's the app what's the, what's the average uh driver pay i mean we we don't have to we don't have to go into you know your specifically but do, do you know what's the average driver take home pay is around 15 to 18 okay that's 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 after well, no, that's you guys. Right. Well, no, you guys are on ten ninety nine. So, so that's fifteen eighteen, and so that's that, with them having their home time. Oh, okay. So you don't want you want you don't want to talk specific. I don't mind talking specific. Um, me spe me specifically. Um, I came. I did a load. Uh, I came home, and last week I was home for three days. My truck made eighty five hundred dollars last week, so my paycheck was a little over two thousand oh, dollars. Okay. Um, so and and I was home for three days. So it, it all depends on what load you book, what they you know, and what they're making, and and then what type of driver you are. Um, 
some drivers like to do long haul. You want to go from here to there, and you don't want to have a lot of stops, where some drivers don't mind stops. So it really just depends on what you want to do. Some of my drivers aren't bringing in, but 6,500, 7 a week on the truck, so they get 25% of that, but that's because they would rather be at home more or try to get these local runs that we can get. Um, like right now, we've had um, some food line stuff. Off. It's not consistent enough to build a fleet off of or even one truck at this point, but um, constantly. But they pay like $1,000 a day. You're running like 200 miles, take like eight hours to unload a max, um, and you get to be at home every night. So what about I'm working, I'm working on Amazon. So what about what what about uh what about felons? Do you, do, you, do y'all do, do the company have anything against felons? Do would they give them a would they give them a chance? What's what's the policy on that? If you know, I mean, as long as it's been nothing crazy and it's been a few years ago, it's definitely not an issue. Okay. Our thing is is uh, just explain to like my thing is is it explain to me why it happened. If you feel like you need to, if not, if it's been long enough, everybody should have a chance to redeem themselves. Nobody, nobody is just not worth the effort. Everybody is worth the effort. So, but like, I feel like there is just a few things that would probably set airs up on somebody's neck, but you can still go to work. Like, okay. well, I know when I was with May, they had a child molester there that was Whoa. a felon and on. How, how did you find that out uh, uh the, the orientation instructor actually told me because i was a girl i was talking about be, feeling weird at church night not want to get out of my truck and he made a comment to me to be careful about the terminals because you know we do have like child molesters and stuff here wow and, and, and after that it was it was a really weird <laughs> it was really weird for me. Wow. Well, okay, so hard. did so 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 the, the the instructor at May trucking just came out of the blue just said, yeah, Yo, we we, we got it. some child molesters here. Wow. Yeah, like we're willing to we're willing to hire anything that walks. Like you just be in your I, I don't think so, he's I, I don't think he should have came out and said that though. I mean I feel like it's telling to too much of someone's business. Yeah. But it, 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 at some point, like, it, it, how much do you warn somebody at the expense of telling someone else's business? So do I tell her to stay her ass in the truck because she's a girl and some shit might happen? Or do I just shut up right now? No. Stay your ass in that truck, girl. They see they, some child molesters in the parking lot. <laughs> it's wow. Just, that's it. That's that's crazy right there, man. That's that's crazy. So, Ali, man, um, what uh, I you know I I I found you on TikTok. Um, you got a couple of more minutes. I I found you on TikTok. Uh, what made you decided to start doing uh, content on TikTok? And have you have you uh, was TikTok your first? Uh, first go around or did you did you do some youtube did you do some uh instagram see i, I have instagram on my phone i barely ever get on it half time if you don't talk to me through snapchat or call me on my phone you're not gonna get me tiktok was something my kids brought me into mm -hmm. i got teenagers and they actually played on it and then when i got on it i realized it was a whole trucker side to tiktok I never knew about it. Exactly. Once I found that, I become utterly obsessed with it. And then it was more of the, the thing I, now you can go and you can go back and forth when it comes to the older generation to the newer, newer generation of trucker. I'm definitely a new generation of trucker, but I feel like I have about the most old world mentality that you can get because I was raised by truckers. But, when it comes to the internet, I feel like my mother, my grandfather, y'all did, they did not have the ability to connect with other truck drivers. You can hear these people's story, you know, where they came from and how they got there. I feel like sometimes it helps to hear somebody else's story so that when you get into that spot, 
you know how to react in it or you know they're bullshit. They didn't get that and and that's what TikTok is for me. It I don't it makes me feel not so alone out here on the road anymore where I did for the for about the first six or eight months. I had started making TikTok um about the end of uh the time I was about to leave May. Um mm-hmm. was about six months in. So I felt alone. I literally, for the longest time, I questioned, did, was this something that I wanted to do long term? And it was because I was lonely out here on the road, and I felt like I had no idea. And mail truck drivers are hit and miss when you come to a truck stop. I am the most friendly person known to man. I will talk to anybody. But then it, it comes to just trying to be friendly to get hit on to somebody saying something out of the way. So... We, as female drivers, get personified as just mean people. But because we've done had so many different ways of being talked to in the truck stop that we don't know how you're about to react. So we're just going to shut up or be mean so that you don't have the chance to. Because sometimes in the truck stop, I can talk to somebody and it be a great conversation. We will be fine. Everything will be okay. Sometimes I can speak to you in the truck stop. The next thing I know, you're talking about me coming back to your truck. It, I'm not. I'm going to my truck. You go your corner, go your corner, sir, and I'm going to my. Like so, it becomes. It becomes a. Is that something that we continue to want to deal with? So I got very secluded in my first six months because what Dylan's. I had somebody try to break in my truck in St. Louis. I talked to him in the truck stop. He tried to get in my truck later on that night. He Whoa. watched me go to my truck. Mm-hmm. And 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 the only thing I can take for that was I was being entirely too friendly in the truck stop. Because I'd be by myself all day long in the truck. I don't get to talk to nobody. So I'm like one of those little dogs that ain't seen nobody in days. I just want you to pat my head and pay me some attention when I see somebody. So in the truck stop, when I was coming out and getting my coffee and going back to the truck, and the coffee was for, I always buy like monster coffee. So that I'm going to put it in my cooler and save it for the next morning so that way I don't have to go in that morning. Mm-hmm. And he, it wasn't an hour and a half. And, and something had told me to belt my doors down that night. And, and somehow he got my door open and it was locked. So somehow he had a key to that freight liner I was in. So I don't, it's weird for women drivers out here. I, the road doesn't scare me. It's the people that scare me. So it becomes a where do where do we cut that conversation at the truck stop? TikTok gives me the ability to talk to you and know that I'm in a safe space. To know that we both do the exact same job and I can understand where you're coming from and we can talk about it. I'm going to understand your trucker's Tourette's when you start cussing the car out beside of you in mid-conversation because it happens. But it gives me my, my my space to where I have the ability to be in my truck and I know that nothing's gonna happen. Nothing bad. You you First said it, you said Saint Louis. Where where were you in, in Saint Louis? What truck stop you was the, at? The pilot of Saint Louis. And as a brand new driver, I didn't know to not park there. I didn't know that this was a bad truck stop. This is somewhere that you don't want to go to. And being a friendly person, it just, I just talk to everybody. If you have a headset, that is like trucker 101, that like this is another truck driver. So when he seen me with a headset on, that sparked conversation, did I drive by myself? I'm very proud that I do this all by myself. There's no man in my truck. I do this all by myself. So I'd be very proud about that. Because I don't know why. It's I don't I'm very proud about that. I don't need nobody in here with me. I got this. And and I think that I talked about that entirely too much to him. That let him know that I was by myself and I was Yeah, you gave out safe. you you gave out too much uh too much information. information. Yeah. That's so it was, that's with kinda, TikTok and, it gives me the ability to give it out and not not but you know what? That's I, you know what? That's what I you know that I I, I tell um, you know I, I when I talk to female drivers and all like that and I look at and I look at you guys uh, online personality and 
and the stuff that y'all do online, you know, I understand some some lady drivers like to, you know, like to give the attention that, you know, like to give the attention so they can get the followers, so they can get the subscribers and stuff like that. But on the flip, on the flip, on the flip side of that, on the flip side of that is is you guys don't understand the dangers that it is out there in 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 the world of trucking in the world of these truck stops and everything you know you guys um you know you you know as i said before you know i'd be like y'all do y'all little tiktok dances and you know walk around and y'all in 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 y'all booty shorts and, sure. and all like that and, and then, right and then expect and then you know get mad when respect somebody them respect and right. then expect you not to act out right they get mad at they get mad at the person because they giving them the attention but you looking for that attention you know and and you can't get mad about it but then the, but then it becomes a safety issue like you know, you was just simply talking to the guy, and then all of a sudden, he just took that as, okay, I'm about to come up in your truck. But now, you know, it's just, you know, to me, I just feel that, you know, especially for a lady driver, it's just best not to give too much information, you know, because it, it, you, you, it don't know who's on, you don't know I who's out there. You don't. That's the problem. And nobody talks about this stuff at first, nor lets alone like warns a female driver as a female driver there's there's so many different obstacles first off you're already looked at that you have no idea what in the hell you are doing you don't know how to back that truck up you have no idea how to drive it we've already got to face that then on top of that it's okay so you have to present yourself in a respectable way some of these things and i don't not anybody that's the problem i don't knock them it's just not necessarily the way that i would present myself but you can't be out here in booty shorts and a tank top with everything hanging out at the trunk stop and get mad at somebody because they either a thought you were a lot lizard or or b said something disrespectful to you i feel like you're asking for that attention is the difference in being like I'm a girly girl. I like makeup. And I do my hair. I also wear. I'm fully clothed every day. You don't. At times, you don't know I got tattoos where I got tattoos because you don't get to see them. So, like I, I make sure I'm covered. Some women don't do that. That shit's going to one night catch up with them because, and me, I am. I'm one of those ones. I talk to everybody. I have a friend of mine that I met him off of TikTok. It is a him. Him likes to dress as a female. He is a truck driver. I don't know how many times I have stressed to this man that he's going to put on female clothing one night at the truck stop and we're going to find him dead in the dumpster sometime the next morning. Okay. Because, <laughs> it's, I mean, I don't know how else nicely to put it. It's not necessarily how the world feels. Or how certain people feel. But there are crazy people out here. You have to watch what you do. People watch you at truck stops. Somebody's going to see that and not look at that. So you go back to your truck and so you come out. Something bad can happen. So it does he be his authentic self out here on the road? Something that makes him just a person and that's dressed as a female. I don't fault nobody for nothing. Do I, do I know? agree with it is a whole nother question this is him so if he does that then okay so then what does what happens when somebody at the truck stop in some crazy city beats him up and and could possibly kill him because just because they thought different. they they thought that you know he was a woman and and kind of tripped up tripped up the person and find out that he exactly. wasn't exactly so, so it, it's like it's not it's not just girls that necessarily have to watch females are definitely it but i feel like it trucking is just as bad as the rest of the world like we are just a subset of people and half of truckers half of truckers truckers to me are the society's rejects for some reason we don't fit in for one reason or another and 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 somebody might take offense to that but i am one of them i am a society's reject 
so I can't talk no shit. I'm I'm the one that didn't never feel like I fit in with everybody else. And I don't necessarily fit in with truckers either, but it's okay because I'm by myself half the time. But it it becomes a these are the people that then we we literally chastise each other for the dumbest shit. Like truckers aren't what we used to be. We used to want to help each other and it be a brotherhood. It's damn sure not that no, it ain't more. That no more. It okay. is every man out for his fucking self and fuck you over me. And it shouldn't be like that. Like with this COVID vaccine shit that we have going on. If you have the ability to shut down and make a fucking point, do it. Do I expect somebody who has a family to feed at home and knows that they lose their job to shut their truck down? No. But the ones of us who have a say-so, the ones of us that have a say-so should speak for the rest of us. And we don't. We don't shut our trucks down. It becomes, a, okay, I'm going to make some money today, so it doesn't matter. But what's going to happen when they actually mandate this sh- I'm not taking it. I refuse. I've been around COVID since COVID started, and I haven't caught it. I don't believe in it. I don't. I don't. I don't know how everybody else feels. Everybody has their own opinion. But just look at what happened in Australia. They got it to where they don't have have it now. But we are so selfish over here in America. Nobody's going to have the next one back. It's it's going to end up being bad. Is what's going to end up happening, and That's nobody's thinking about it. All right, all right, Ali Snow. Thank thank you very much, man. Awesome conversation. Um, you know, we got the little, we got to know a little bit more about you. We got to know a little bit more about the company that you are uh, rocking out with, Simba. Simba, as in Lion Simba. King. Simba. Uh, you guys can, you know, follow this young lady on TikTok up under Ali Snow. Uh, and yeah, that's basically where she at. <laughs> Nowhere else. And yes, she does have some good content over there. Uh, Ali, thank you very much for coming on to the show. I really do appreciate it. You're welcome. You're you, welcome. You are a citizen now. So if there's anything that you like, if you wanna, if you wanna come on to the show, if uh, with any topic or anything, you are more than welcome to uh, come on and chop it up. And uh, and yeah, that's about it. We're gone, everybody. <laughs>